In this video, we're going to use the tracker program to uh, analyze the motion of a moving object. So the first thing that we're going to do is open up a um, video clip, and I'm going to go into my Mechanics Videos folder and pick the first one, which is called Ball Drop. And it loads into the main window of Tracker. The first thing we should do is play it and see what's going on. So we'll click on the uh, green arrow here, the green play arrow, and here we go. And a ball is seen to fall. Not very exciting, perhaps, but we'll get some interesting data from it, hopefully. All right, um, one thing about this video is that there appears to be two images in each frame, and there are some uh, nasty horizontal lines. So. Uh, let's get rid of those. Let's go up to the uh, video item here on the menu and go down to filters and then new and then choose deinterlace. There. And we can close this window and now it should be better if we press, press the rewind button, go all the way to the beginning, play the video again. It looks much cleaner. Very good. Now, we're really interested in the moving ball, and there are several frames at the beginning and at the end as well that don't really contain much information. In fact, if we go back to the very beginning and I step forward frame by frame with this blue arrow down here at the bottom right, you see that in frame zero, the man is holding the ball in his hand. Frame one, he's still holding the ball. Frame three, still holding the ball. Frame 4, he seems to be thinking about releasing the ball. Frame 5, he has opened his fingers and the ball is actually just beginning to fall. So the action really begins on uh, frame 5. And if we go forward, frame by frame, we see the ball falling beside the ruler until frame 17, the ball is just about to disappear from view. In fact, one more frame and it's gone. Now, there are 32 frames in this video clip, so there's about 14 frames, 14 or 15 frames, where absolutely nothing is happening. So we're not interested in those either. So we want to start with frame 5, and we want to end at frame 17. And for that, we go to the rightmost, bottommost icon here, um, called Clip Settings. Click on that, and a little window appears which indicates that right now the start frame is 0, but we want it to be 5. So we'll change that. And then the end frame, we don't want it to be 32. We want it to be 17. So let's change that. OK, and click OK. So now we've restricted the video to the really interesting portion, and we're ready to start measuring things. We'll go right to the very beginning. And first of all, we need to choose a scale, and we also need to choose uh, a coordinate system. If we go up here to the top left and click on this icon with a double-headed arrow, which is actually a ruler, we can click and drag the tips of this ruler, or measuring tape, to wherever we want. And now the conveniently visible ruler in the video has markings every 10 centimeters. And because I've done this before, I can tell you that I'm setting the double-headed arrow so that it spans precisely 10 markings. In other words, there's exactly a meter's worth of arrow there. Let's make it really as precise as we can. Very good. Uh, now, it says here 399.7 in some arbitrary units, but we know that this is 1 meter. So to change that, we'll just click on it and type in a 1. And there we go. So now we've set the scale. We go back to the measuring tape icon and click on it again to make the scale disappear. And the other thing that we can do is choose a pair of coordinate axes, which we do with the icon right next to the measuring tape there. Now, we can do two things with this coordinate system. First of all, if we go to the origin, we can click and drag it 
so that we can place the origin wherever we want. The other thing that we can do is we click on the x-axis, for example, here and click and drag that and move it up and down and we can rotate the coordinate axis, which is very useful in case the vertical direction in the video is not exactly vertical, which is not the case here. Uh, it is nice and vertical, so all we need to do is put the origin of coordinates at some convenient location and I'm going to choose the initial position of the ball so that the ball is going to start falling from the origin. Well, let's do that and once we've chosen our coordinate system then once again we click on the same icon as before and make the axes disappear but the, uh, the origin has been set. The program will remember it. We're ready now to create a track for which we go to the icon with the little red squares and the star called track control. Click on that and click on new to create a new track. And we have a variety of options here. We're going to choose point mass and it's called mass A and it's going to appear with little uh, red diamonds. This button here um, determines whether we have trails and what the trails look like. I have found that trails are actually quite distracting so personally I prefer to click on no trail and have no trails. And we can leave the other options as they are. Alright, so let's close the track control then. And we're ready to start marking positions of the ball. And for that purpose, we click on shift, we press shift, and so the cursor now becomes a crosshair, which I'm going to place as close as I can to the middle of the ball, and then click. Now, that position got recorded and the program automatically moved forward a frame. We're now in frame 6. So we can repeat the process. Press down shift and set the crosshair and click. Press down shift and click. Press down shift and click. Now before we go any further, let's move up to the right here where we see two little blue arrows. I'm going to click on the top one and that is going to cause a new panel to unfold where we're getting a plot of the positions of the ball. Now the horizontal axis in this plot is time but the vertical axis it starts off being the x-coordinate of the ball. Now the x-coordinate is not really changing uh, very much. It's changing a little bit because of the uncertainty in placing the crosshair but uh, we're not really interested in the horizontal position of the ball. Of course, we're interested in the vertical position. So let's change that. And in order to change that, we click on the X. And that brings up a menu with a whole host of choices. We can choose the Y component of the position. We can choose the magnitude of the position. We can also measure an angle. We can measure velocity, acceleration components, etc. So, in this case, we're going to choose the position Y component and the graph then changes. Now, a few positions have been recorded. We're going to go back to the video and continue doing the same as before. So, shift, click, shift, click, and you can see the graph building up on the right. And we'll continue until we reach the bottom of the window and the ball is gone right there. That's the last frame. Very good. Now we expect to see of course a parabola in our graph and that is certainly what it's beginning to look like. We can actually um, do some work with this graph now. We can analyze it, we can fit a curve to it, and we could uh, perhaps derive the value of the acceleration, for example, from this graph, which is what we're going to do in the next part of this video.